Hey folks, this video is going to cover Roth conversions. Before we dive into how to perform a Roth conversion in Projection Lab, let's get acquainted with the example scenario that we'll use to explore the effects of Roth conversions. In this case, we have our couple, Ashley and Jordan. They're 30 years old. They earn $85,000 a year. Uh, that Their income is going to gradually increase to about $120,000 over the course of their career. They have moderate uh, expenses. We're just modeling them very simply here. We we have expenses during uh, their early uh, during their working life, and then we're going to add on an additional ten thousand in expenses once they've retired. They also own a home, uh, and they have a car uh, currently, and then they're going to have a recurring car uh, purchase uh, every twelve years. So that's that's denoted here in the in the graph. They also have uh, cash flow priorities, so that they're intending to max out their 401k. That's listed at the top. They have an emergency fund, and they also perform Roth contributions. And any money left over in a given year will be put into taxable investments. One way to help look at Roth conversions is to switch from the net worth plot to the stacked by category plot. Now that we're on stacked by category, we have a nice illustration of where their money lives and how that changes over time. So in their case, Ashley and Jordan want to uh, want to retire at financial independence. They've defined financial independence as 26 times expenses. Their retirement happens the following year. In the following year, they also we also see the start of additional expenses, the, the additional ten thousand dollars a year. The teal bar at the top represents taxable investments. The light blue bar represents the 401k, or their combined 401ks in this case. And the dark blue represents Roth IRAs at this point. So before we dive into actually performing a Roth conversion, let's take a look at a couple other things really quick. So here, up here in the top right, we see this current plan has some early withdrawal penalties. So this is a, an early indication of something. And to see even more detail, we can go to tax analytics. From tax analytics, we see here early withdrawal penalties of 24,000 over the life of the plan. We also see IRMA surcharges of almost 18,000. So these are additional premiums paid for Medicare when our income is over a certain point. Those are shown here in the dark orange on, on the very top of this bar graph. So if we see, if we look at taxes here, this kind of, this follows what you might expect. Obviously they're paying a lot of tax early in their career when they're, when they're working and and earning increasingly more money over time. Once they hit financial independence, they retire. They now pay, you know, almost no income tax. Uh, in in most in many years, uh, we see here this bright red. This is the early withdrawal penalty that kicks in because they've run out of uh, taxable investments or tax-free uh, early withdrawals to make. And then these last three years at age 57, 58, and 59, before they're allowed to make regular distributions from their 401k, they're going to be paying these, these penalties. Okay, so that pretty much covers the base plan. We'll just click back over onto plan. So what can we do about this? Well, let's see what happens if we try to convert 100% of our 401k into Roth. Currently, this is actually showing the same plan, uh, same as the base plan. So we're going to walk through the steps to, to do the actual Roth conversion. So let's open up accounts. Let's click Ashley's. We'll scroll down here to Roth conversion. And by default, you'll see something that looks just like this. So it'll default to this initial input of one, three, and five years. And these are just these are just data points. You can use the slider to move things up and down if you want. Uh, to make things simple, we're just going to type in some values here. So we need about $100,000 a year probably and roughly over, over 20 years to ensure we convert everything. And after we make those, those edits, we can scroll down to see the impact of this. So enabling this Roth conversion, we see here we've We've reduced lifetime taxes. We've converted almost 800,000. It actually only runs over 18 years. So this means we've converted everything in 18 years. Final net worth increases by uh, over half a million dollars. And we've eliminated uh, some of those early withdrawal penalties. In fact, it looks like we've eliminated all the early withdrawal penalties from this account. Great, so let's hit save. Now, 
we can see here this this dark blue bar is now now much bigger but we still have this light blue bar and we still have some mandatory withdrawals for Jordan's account so let's go ahead and open Jordan's account I've pre-filled this one in so we're just gonna we're just going to enable that again the same values 1 to 20 100 thousand dollars and we'll see here actually before we leave the addition of Jordan's conversion actually decreases our net worth but still uh, still uh, decreases our lifetime taxes paid. We're going to keep this because we want to we want to look at uh, at the scenario of converting all of the money, and then we'll compare it to uh, fifty percent. All right. So, so now, if we look at the full plan, we'll see these these new icons: start of Roth conversion, Ashley; start of Roth conversion, Jordan. And if we scroll over, we see the grade sort of the grayed out version. It says no more money to convert for Ashley. And no more. And then it says end of Roth conversion for Jordan. So it looks like we had a little bit of money left over for Jordan. If we go to cash flow in this year, we can see that the remaining qualified withdrawal was taken out at this point uh, in this in this year. And if we look at the if we look at the graph here, we see there is no more uh, tax deferred investments in this year. So a combination of, of the conversion and the normal drawdown of the 401k has, has reduced the 401k to zero. And if we go to tax analytics, we'll see there factor no early withdrawal penalties and there's all, there are also no IRMA surcharges. Our final net worth, our legacy value is 6.2 million. We can click over to the base plan. We can see that that's a slight increase from the base plan. So 6.2 6.06 to 6.2. We pay 1.95 million taxes in in the scenario where we convert all the money to to Roth versus 2.69 million, which is great. But maybe we can do a little bit better. Part of the issue here is we are paying taxes early, and there's a cost to doing that. That's money that can't be put into taxable investments or has to come out of taxable investments to pay those taxes. So converting too much money early can actually hurt your final net worth. And depending on your tax situation, you may, you may be fine with, with having a certain amount of your net worth uh, uh, in, in taxable accounts. So let's compare to the 50% scenario. To achieve 50%, what we've done is just disabled Jordan's conversions and Ashley's conversions stay the same. We'll see here, it says uh, Ashley's conversions start and end when there's no more money in Ashley's account. So here we see there are still, go there are still RMDs for Jordan's account, but we do not have any early withdrawal penalties. If we go to tax analytics, we'll see slightly taller bars for taxes later in life and somewhat lower taxes in the middle compared to compared to the 100% scenario. We can quickly click over to the 100% scenario to see that. I think the more interesting piece for, for most people is this legacy number. So 6.2 million in the 100% case versus 6.64 million. Total lifetime taxes, 2.13 million versus 1.95. So again, you do save money on total taxes paid by by converting all the money to Roth. And just to illustrate uh, the, the main difference between, between net worth values, yes, it's higher in the 50% in the scenario, but in the 100% scenario, all of the money is in this, is represented by this tax-free investment. If we compare that to the 50%, we see that there's still a good chunk that's in taxable accounts and also in pre-tax 401k. Depending on your tax situation, this is an important point to consider. Just to go back to the base plan for comparison, so this is the 50% here comparing to the base plan. We see a roughly even amount of taxable investments, 401k and Roth. However, final net worth is 6.05 million versus 6.635. So that's pretty much it for the, uh, the basic ins and outs of Roth conversion and projection lab. Uh, there are many other more complex scenarios you can you can model. You could model what happens w with my Roth conversions when I change my tax situation. If you'd like to learn more about 
these advanced scenarios or any other topic in Projection Lab, please let us know in the comments. Love to hear your feedback. Uh, you can also check us out on Discord. Uh, the link for that will also be in the description. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching.